Hello and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and joining me here in the Murrieta Studios is Dr. David Burns. Hi, David. Hi, Fabrice. Dr. David Burns has been a pioneer in the development of cognitive therapy, and he is the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 20 languages. He is an emeritus adjunct clinical professor of psychiatry at the Stanford University School of Medicine. Welcome to episode 83 of the Feeling Good podcast. Tonight is uh, the first episode of a series of role plays, uh, role play techniques that uh, David has uh, put together. And this will be even more interesting because we are enrolling members of the Tuesday group to be our uh, guinea pigs and volunteers to do this. So tonight we have uh, Sarah who has uh, written a uh, a mood journal and um, before uh, this recording David and and she have uh, done a little bit of uh, paradoxical agenda setting so we have not glossed over that. This has been done already. Now we're going to go into one method that uh, David uses as like his uh, super duper method called the externalization of voices. So David, would you like to tell us uh, something about uh, this method? No, Fabrice, I wouldn't. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's my feeble attempt at humor. Yes. And we'll also uh, do a little bit of the therapy with Sarah leading into the externalization of voices. So it doesn't, because Sarah brought us a real issue uh, and, uh, Uh, if you do a technique without, like, empathizing or melting away the resistance, you may be asking for for trouble. So we'll do just enough of uh, paradoxical agenda setting here, a little re- review, so mm-hmm. you folks can see what's what's happening. And then we'll do the externalization of voices. But let me say that when I first started learning cognitive therapy, attending Dr. Beck's weekly seminars at University of Pennsylvania, I was, you know, fascinated and used the techniques with uh, some of my most difficult patients, and they they really liked the techniques and and responded. Uh, but I felt that a lot of the Beckian techniques, while occasionally were helpful, were a little bit on the intellectual and dry side, like you know, examine the evidence and the Socratic method, and uh, let's define terms and. And, and, and things of that nature. And I felt like we needed something more powerful and, and, and dramatic to supplement those methods. And one of the first that I, te- I created is called externalization of voices. And to, to this day, I think it's arguably one of the most powerful, uh, if not the most powerful of all of the cognitive uh, therapy techniques. And it's uh, combined with, uh, exter- with uh, the self-defense paradigm and the uh, acceptance paradox that we'll will illustrate those tonight and show you exactly how to, how to use this this technique. But I would say that one of the unique features of team CBT as opposed to traditional uh, CBT is we use a lot of powerful role playing uh, techniques. Uh, in in our next podcast, uh, Eleanor, another uh, member of our Tuesday group, is going to help me demonstrate the paradoxical double standard tech technique. Uh, We actually did a technique uh, in group tonight that was very popular called forced empathy is another really amazing role play technique. And then we have one called the man from Mars. We we have one called, uh, uh, oh, the devil's advocate uh, technique. Uh, And and we're going to show you quite a few of these and and exactly, exactly how they work. Now, before... I go into externalization of voices. Uh, I want to thank you, Sarah, for kindly sharing your your personal issue here. And I was kind of shocked and saddened to see what it is. Uh, you 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 let us know just a few minutes ago that you're uh, planning to to move to uh, to Austin, Texas, in in a couple of weeks. You've been with us here, you know, six months or or a year or so, and. I've really come to like and, and admire you, and, and it'll be a loss. Uh, but you're kind of going to, to get a fresh start with your personal life and with your uh, therapy career. 
and that's exciting. You have a, a good friend in Austin, and it's a it's a, a cool place to to live these days. Uh, but the upsetting event is just thinking about my upcoming out of state move in two weeks, and and you're feeling a little down and unhappy. Thirty uh, percent, not 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 too much. A, a, a fair amount of anxiety, worry, and nervousness. Seventy five percent. Some inadequacy. Sixty percent. Lonely, unwanted, rejected, and alone, 75%. That's pretty strong. Self-conscious, 70%. Discouraged, 75%. And, and stuck and defeated, 70%. So none of these are up in the 90 range like you would have with someone with really severe, you know, crushingly intense uh, feelings. But 70 is still, you know, 60 to 70 is, is pretty, pretty darn strong. And then the negative thoughts... That, that, that trigger these. Why don't, why don't I have you uh, read them here, Sarah? Sure. So the negative thoughts include um, a lot of my friends are ahead of me in life. Um, moving to California set my... Let's say how much you believe oh, that. 98%. Um, moving to California just set my life back a year, 20%. Um, I should be further along in my career and 100% sure this is the career I want to be in long term. 85%. I won't be able to find a mental health job that won't make me very anxious, 100%. My anxiety over the past year indicates to me that I'm in the wrong profession, 70%. Um, for the most part, I haven't really helped my clients this year um, and haven't been clinically skillful, 90%. Um, I should have better, been better at my job this year, 100%. I won't be able to cope with stress using help, healthy coping skills now that I'm in the habit of using some maladaptive ones, 95%. Um, I won't be able to find a way to make friends in Austin, 30%. I will be lonely and sad in Austin without friends, 70%. This transition will be as hard as the other cross-country moves in the past, 50%. And the last one is I will be unable to get back to the healthy um, mental and physical state that I was in three years ago, 98%. Great. Now, I asked you, uh, Sarah, if uh, if this was something you wanted help with t tonight, uh, first agenda-setting question, and, and you said you did. And, and I said, what? What help would you be looking for? And you said my goal would be to feel more optimistic about the move and not so anxious and, and, and insecure. And then I said, well, suppose we had a magic button, and if you press the magic button, all these negative thoughts and feelings will go to zero, and you'll be just end the session tonight feeling tremendously confident. Uh, and would you press the button? You, you said, well, yes, I, I would press the, the button. And then I said, well, we don't have a magic button, but we've got some really cool Tech techniques. But before we use those techniques, maybe we better step back and, and say, what do these negative thoughts and feelings show about you that's positive and awesome on the one hand, and how are they going to be beneficial uh, for you on the other hand? And so we made a list, and you can add to it now if you want, but, but, but you said that these negative thoughts and feelings, number one, they, they show that you're, you're very realistic since it can be hard to make a move, and also, you're realistic that I'm sure your your therapy skills could be improved, you know, quite consider considerably. Uh, it all these negative thoughts and feelings sh show that you're thoughtful. Uh, that, that that show that that you're you're concerned about your own mental health and that you want to care for your yourself and take care of yourself. Your self criticism shows that you're you're very uh, has has motivated you to work hard and improve your skills, and I think your skills have Im improved quite significantly here, even if they're not up to the level where where, where you're hoping to get them to. Um, your 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 negative thoughts also show your compassion, your desire to do good work for your for your clients. They also show your honesty about your own shortcomings. They also show your humility. They also show your high standards that that you, that you really want to do well and and you you know put, put, push your, push yourself and not get complacent complacent. And it also shows that you're wanting to connect not only with friends, guys, gals, you know, new people you'll meet in in Austin, but also with with your uh, pa patients uh, there as well. 
Uh, can you think of any other uh, positives that these negative thoughts and feelings uh, show about you? Um, maybe career-oriented. We sort of covered that with motivated. So say that again? Career-oriented. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Then that's, that's awesome to be, to be career-oriented. Absolutely. Now, if we press the magic button, all these ten positive qualities will disappear along with your negative thoughts and feelings. And so maybe instead of the magic button, we could do a little quick magic dial here and, and say, could we dial each type of negative feeling down to a lower level? That, that's So you could keep all of these great things about yourself and still eliminate a, a good portion of, of your angst. Uh, you're, you're, you're feeling 30% down and unhappy. How, what would be an appropriate amount to feel? T tonight, because there is a little sadness here. You know, you're you're leaving, and and you know, if you didn't feel some sadness, it would say like, oh, I'm, you know, leaving, leaving all the people that I've connected with here in California. But I don't give a damn. You know, I'm happy as can be. So, you know, you you wouldn't want that. So what? What would be a healthy amount of sadness? Maybe 10%. Okay, let's put it 10. That, that seems like a good goal. And then how anxious? You're 75% anxious. Um, maybe 10. Yeah, 10 sounds like uh, pl pl plenty of anxiety. How um, inadequate? You're 60% inadequate. How, what's a good amount of in inadequacy? Cause you, Five. Is that enough? Five, six. <laughs> Five to six. Okay. okay. Five to six. Um, how how lonely do you want to feel? And and uh, you're feeling unwanted, rejected, and alone. Seventy five percent. What? Five. It's all you want. Yeah. Okay. Five <laughs> five percent. Uh, how how self conscious do you want to feel? Uh, maybe like fifteen. F fifteen. Okay. Uh, how um, discouraged do you want to feel? Ten. Okay. Foot to ten. And, and how um, stuck and defeated do you want to feel? I could go with 10. T 10, great. <clears throat> so that's really the end of the, of the paradoxical agenda setting. We'll see if we can lower them to, to this level. Now, which thought do you want to start out on? I always start out on, on one thought, and we'll look at the distortions in that thought, and then we'll dive right into externalization of voices. Um. Maybe at number 10, I will be unable to get back to the healthy mental and physical state that I was in a couple of years ago. Okay, I love that thought. Now, what, what are some distortions in that? We can write them down here in, in the distortion column. Uh, yeah, right right here. Let's say all or nothing. Okay, put A A O N there. And I, I totally agree. And tell us why it's all or nothing thinking. I'm kind of saying I'm either totally not healthy in any way at all or 100% healthy. Um, exactly. No middle ground. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, and why is that unrealistic? It's always a spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. What's, what's another distortion? Um, I would say overgeneralization is kind of written into it. I think... Um, with different moves and major transitions, I've kind of had this um, happen where I'm just not in a routine yet to really be taking care of myself. Yeah, and w and where does it come into being an overgeneralization? Um, I'm kind of overgeneralizing that because this has happened in the past, this transition will also be really difficult. Yeah, and since I'll, I'll be unable, like I'll never be able to. Right. Yeah, right? Yeah. So OG is, is really good. What else is that? Um, God, it's probably all of them. Um, maybe mental filter. Mm -hmm. Right. Why? Um, I'm looking at the negatives right now in the way, like my day-to-day -day habits, but there are also a lot of positives that I haven't even accounted for. So could we also then say discounting the positive? Mm -hmm. So you could put MF and DP. What other distortions? Definitely fortune telling, jumping to conclusions. I'm yeah. Predicting that I'll never in my lifetime be able to, you know, get in shape yeah, and feel shape. happy. So, but fortune telling. But what else is it? Mm, maybe minimization. Mm -hmm. Right. In terms of minimizing any health that I do currently have. 
Yep, yep. What, what else is it? Um, emotional reasoning I'm not sure about. Well, I feel like I'll never get in shape, so I never will. Right, I yeah. feel defeated, so I am de defeated. I, I feel like I'm screwed, so I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. Take the thing. How, how about the next one? Is it a should statement? Yeah, I think it's definitely a should statement. Like, I should have been able to be on top of all of this this entire year, and I wasn't. Y yeah. That's a big one. Y yeah, and I, I should be in perfect shape, and I, I shouldn't have to be, you know, in a little out of shape or self-doubt, you know, I mm -hmm. should be superwoman type of thing. Right. And I don't know if it's labeling, I don't think so, and I don't know if it's blame. I think maybe a little bit of self-blame for um, kind of letting myself Oh, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that down. Okay. So now here's the way externalization of voices goes. You guys may, may know it already, and some of our listeners will, but some won't. But I'm going to uh, be you, and you're going to be you. So what, what is your name? Sarah. And what's my name? Sarah. Sarah. So you have to set it up like that first. And you say, we're both going to be Sarah. And then you say, I'm going to be the negative part of your brain, the negative Sarah. And I'm going to talk to you in the second person you. And I'm going to say to you exactly what you're saying to yourself. Uh, except I'll put it in the second person you. I want you to, to play the self-loving Sarah. And, and see if you can defeat me, and I want you to speak in the first person, I. Now, when you try to defeat me, there's two strategies you can use. You can use one or the other or, or a mixture. In the self-defense paradigm, you tell me I'm, I'm full of BS, and you argue with me and say it, it, it's not true. When you use the acceptance paradox, you, you go to the opposite side and, and you defeat the negative thought, thought by finding truth in it uh, with a sense of humor or, or a sense of, of inner peace. The acceptance paradox is more of an Eastern mystical spiritual tradition. The self-defense paradigm is more Western you know, civilization type of thing. And sometimes one works, but not the other. And sometimes only a combination will, will be effective. If, if, if what you're doing doesn't work, go to, go to the other one. And if neither works, try, try a combination. And we'll do role reversals back and forth and, until you get it. And the goal here is to hit it out of the park, not to settle for partial defeat, defeat of this thought. So could I talk to you for a minute to Sarah? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mean to upset you. I know you're having this nice session with uh, David and Fabrice and, and all of that, but, but I want to remind you that you're going to be unable to get back into the healthy mental and physical state that you were in three years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely true that I'm not really, you know, I'm not going to yoga every day and doing stuff like that that I used to do um, that I really enjoyed, but you know, it's been kind of a challenging year and a lot of things have come into play that made that difficult to stay on top of. And now I'm setting myself up um, in a new place, in a new job where I'll be able to do that kind of thing. Okay, so who won? Um, it was kind of a tie. Yeah, kind of a try. try yeah. So uh, try, a, try a role reversal. Okay. Um, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want you to know um, you will never be able to um, get back to a healthy mental and physical state like you were in three years ago. So what is it that you claim I'll be unable to do? Um, be in a healthy... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's being in a state. But, but what, what, what would I have to do to get into that state that I'm not going to be able to do? What, what, I'm a little slow learner here, so I need to know what you're referring to. Um, like exercise every day and be really de-stressed. Okay. Well, let's just focus on one thing at a, at a time, okay? okay. That, that I won't be able to exercise every day. Okay. Uh, that's your claim. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll be able to exercise every day, if I'll choose to exercise every day. Uh, will I be able to exercise on some days? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that would be enough <laughs> for me because I'm kind of lowering my standards right now because it's going to be a big move and 
uh, I have a problem much bigger than, you know, not doing daily exercise. What's that? Listening to your BS. <laughs> yeah. Who won? You did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. And how did I win huge? Uh, by being specific about what the demands are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try a role reversal. Let, let's see if you can do it. Uh, can I Can I talk to you, Sarah? And by the way, for the listeners, you want to go back and forth and tell the patient can, can hit it out of the park. And you really usually only need to crush one negative thought because once that happens, there's a change in the patient's brain or client's brain, whatever word you want to use, and you can generally blow them all out of the out of the water. But at any rate, yeah, I know that David did some funny thing there, uh, but uh, but I'm Sarah, and uh, and I want to tell you, Sarah, that you're going to be unable to get back to the healthy mental and physical state that you were in uh, three years ago, and don't you forget it. Yeah, I mean, I... I would like to know more about what you mean by healthy physical and mental state because that seems really vague um, and difficult to achieve. Yeah, well, you're, you won't be able to exercise every day and you won't be able to go to yoga class. Yeah, I mean, that that would be a great aspiration. I enjoyed doing that a couple of years ago. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm a failure if I can't go to yoga every day. It would be nice, but, you know, I'll go as much as I want to. Who, who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Say huge. Huge. And how did you win huge? Um, I'm just kind of realizing it's humorous that that's such a big thing that I've built up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the solution for recovery from a lot of depression and anxiety is the, the death of the ego and, and acceptance of our, of our flaws. Uh, there's a, there's a, a four deaths of the ego depending on if you're recovering from depression or anxiety or relationship problem or a habit or addiction. But here, you, you know, it's like you have this view of yourself as this, you know, great shape and, and, mm -hmm. and everything and not accepting the fact that it's going to be, a, you know, a challenging and, and a little bit bit of a ragged, ragged time. So, you know, that, that, that's okay. The problem isn't the lack of perfection, but, but the way we... We pressure ourselves and beat up on ourselves. Well, um, let's try another one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Sarah, you beat me on that one, but I did want to remind you that you won't be able to find a way to make any new friends in, in Austin. Yeah, I really don't believe that. <laughs> um, there are a ton of people my age there, and there are a ton of ways that people get to know each other in that area. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? huge? Huge. Yeah, but you're going to be lonely and sad without any friends in Austin. Just picture yourself there, you know, alone and rejected and pining away. And <laughs> 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 Well, uh, recently I've been using David Burns' tools of practicing doing things alone and even going on trips by myself, and I've really enjoyed it. So... You know, even if I don't have a ton of friends at first, I know I'll be totally fine just exploring the city. Who, who won? Yeah, I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. Well, okay, you beat me on that, but here's one, you know, that you're not going to be able to beat me on, and, and that's that you won't be able to cope with stress using healthy coping skills now that you're in the habit of using maladaptive ones. Uh, and I would say the coping skills that I've used aren't maladaptive, but I certainly have better tools to use, like daily mood logs, and I know how to do that. And I feel motivated to work through that now. Who who won? I think I did. Big or small? It's big. Big or huge? Just big. Just big? You want to do a role reversal? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Just wanted to let you know, you know now that you um, have been using maladaptive coping skills you won't be able to use healthy ones again it sounds like all or nothing thinking yeah did, did i fill this out yeah is this daily is that a healthy coping skill right yeah so it was the yeah. buddha said so many uh, years ago screw you yeah <laughs> so who won you, big or small big, big or huge? huge and how did i win huge um i don't really know how to let's be specific it. yeah yeah and also the all or nothing right um distortions yeah yeah um Okay, uh, well, you beat me on that one, uh, but uh, the fact is all your friends are, are ahead of you in their lives, careers, and relationships, so you're screwed. <laughs> I mean, a lot of my friends um, 
have made advances in their career and have more certainty on their path than I do at this particular moment. But, you know, I think it's arbitrary to say that they're ahead in life. I've learned a lot over the past year, and I think I'm setting myself up for success in a lot of ways. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. Yeah, but you should be further along in your career and 100% sure this is the career you want to be in long term. Yeah, it would be nice to have more certainty and it would be nice to be further along in my career. But, you know, at the same time, a lot of people go into this career and, you know, when they're in their 50s. So I think I'm doing fine. Yeah, but you won't be able to find a mental health job that that won't make you very anxious. Even if you get a job, you're just going to be paralyzed with anxiety nonstop. It's like one thing I know is that it's my thoughts and not the job that's making me anxious. And I have coping skills to be able to work through that. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Okay. Um, yeah, but here here's the the killer uh, for you, uh, mm -hmm. Sarah. Your anxiety over the past year indicates to me that you're in the wrong profession. You know, I think my... I definitely attributed it to that, but I think there are a lot of life circumstances that I just had a little trouble calibrating to. Um, and I think my anxiety showed a lot of these positive things that we went over before. Um, it wasn't my job that directly caused me to feel anxious. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? It was huge. And how did you do it? Um, reallocating <laughs> the reason for the anxiety. Uh, yeah, reattribution. Yeah, reattribution. Yeah. But um, for the most part, and here's something you will not be able to defend against, Sarah, and I didn't want to kick you in the stomach here as the last <laughs> exchange, but I, I, you, you haven't really helped any of your clients this year, uh, and you haven't been uh, clinically skillful. I mean, it is my first year out of school. I think I do have a lot to learn, and I have a lot of um, ways to improve my skills, but I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from clients that I have been really helpful to them, and I'm sure in the future I'll be able to help clients even more. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. Is there anything left? I didn't read every one of them, but you seem to be pretty effectively blowing me out of the water, and you can see if you have any questions or comments. February's too. Uh, did we do this one? Oh, yeah, well... Um, what I forgot to tell you is that moving to California just set your life back a year. <laughs> um, yeah, with that one, I can see how you would say that and why you would think that. And I also think I've learned more about myself and what I'm looking for in my life and my career and relationships more than I ever have before. Who won? So. I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. You want to see another way to be, be yeah. huge on that? Okay, go, go ahead. All right. Just wanted to let you know, moving to California just set your life back for an entire year. Yeah, but I met David, and that made it all worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it did. Uh, so now let, let's see. Uh, so is there anything else left? No, that's all. Okay. Now, uh, the listeners will say, because this hasn't been a real emotional session with a lot of sobbing and laughter, and so they, they'll wonder if we're just play acting and, and you know, mouthing the words. Is, oh, is yeah. this real or not? Oh, yeah, it's absolutely real. Uh -huh. Are you feeling differently now? I feel a lot better. It's okay. like the weight is lifted. Great. Let's see how, how sad and depressed you're feeling right now. I don't feel sad or depressed. Zero? Put, yeah. put a zero there. How anxious are you feeling? Um, maybe like a five. The five. My okay. movers haven't come yet. <laughs> and what's this inadequate? Um, yeah, inadequate. Not really like a two. Two. Okay. From a sixty to a two, and then a lo How lonely are you feeling? No, I'd say that's a zero. Zero. Okay. And then uh, how self-conscious? I don't feel self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. And. Um, What's that? Discouraged. Oh, discouraged. No, I'd say that's a zero. Uh-huh. And then, that, what's this one? Stuck, defeated. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I'd still, I don't feel that way. Zero. Okay, great. And so what were the healing dimensions here? Because you essentially just blew everything out of the water and, and exceeded all of your goals. What, what caused this such rapid and dramatic change? Um, I think taking the first 
thought that we talked about, which was the one that's been weighing on me the most, um, bringing humor into that to the point that I could actually laugh about it and genuinely think it's funny. Yeah. That sort of catapulted me into rethinking all of it. Oh, that, that, yeah, that's great. I, I'll be unable to get back to the healthy mental and physical state that I was in three years ago. Yeah. That was was awesome, and that's one of the reasons I love externalization of voices. I mean, you, you did it more quickly than the typical patient might who's really severely depressed, but you can see pretty much if someone is getting it, and you can keep attacking if the person is just rationalizing or, or, or isn't really really turning, turning the negative thought around. Uh, but that's called externalization of voices, and then next uh, week, I'm going to teach a technique called the paradoxical double standard te- technique. They're both powerful. The externalization, externalization of voices that we just did is, is much more powerful, but it's somewhat intimidating. Uh, the, the paradoxical double standard technique is not at all threatening uh, to patients. But if you had recordings of my entire career as a psychiatrist, you would see that probably 40 or 50 percent of of all the minutes I've spent has been spent doing externalization of voices. It's by far the most the most help, helpful technique and and yet very few cognitive therapists use it for for, for whatever reason maybe they're, they're afraid of it but it's really a tremendous uh, a tremendous method. Do you have any questions or, or comments Fabrice and I yeah, David. There's uh, there's one thing that um, struck me as, uh, especially in one of the exchanges, uh, you were asking Sarah, you know, what is it that worked? What made it huge? And uh, you said, be specific. And for our listeners, uh, be specific is one of your techniques. Yeah. One of the you know most elementary ones. Yeah. Where you really. Uh, go into details about what it is that is making this thought a negative thought, and uh, and so what what really um, came out for me is in in your externalization of voices when you, when you respond to the negative voice, you actually use a, a smattering of small techniques like this. Yes, and right. They're all bundled under this one big technique that you call the externalization of voices. Yeah, Th- that, That's right. And and let's be specific, because one of the hardest ones to teach therapists, I think, because it's so simple and basic, and, and it's just based on the idea that when, when we're depressed, we have these abstract thoughts. Like uh, therapists will have the thought, oh, I'm a lousy therapist, I'm a fa- or I'm a failure as a mother or something, or as a father. And then you can say, well, what specifically am, am I failing at? What specifically do, should I work on improving my empathy? Well, which which empathy skill? Disarming, thought empathy, feeling empathy, inquiry, I feel statement, stroking. And once you say, okay, gosh, David, you need to improve your disarming technique, you say, yeah, that's something I, I need to work on. That, that would be great. But the, the suffering disappears because there's something very different about saying, I, I need to work on my disarming technique, which is something I can practice and improve mm-hmm. pretty quickly, as opposed to I'm a failure as a therapist, or I'm a failure as a father, or I'm a failure as a mother. And in this case, you know, it was, you know, you had some vague notion that you wouldn't be able to get back to some view of physical and mental health. And I said, well, what specifically will I not be able to do? Will I not be able to, you know, jog every day or every other day or you know once you get it down to that specific level the the uh the negative thought suddenly appears pretty nonsensical now uh you're able to do this in in the role play when you do a role reversal yes because uh if if this uh because it's the the client him or herself who knows the answer to those specific questions so you, you have to be, you know, the, the one um, taking the, the role of the, the positive so that the client can answer in, in, in the negative and say, well, this is what, what this is about. Yes, and you have to be willing to do a lot of role reversals. When I first developed this technique, it used to take me sometimes several weeks to crush the first negative thought with a, the with a client. You know, several one-hour sessions, of uh-huh. weekly interviews, and I'd have to think about it because the patients are so good at persuading us that they really are hopeless and worthless and, and yeah. no good. And then often it would come to me in the middle of the night how to talk back to the patient's thought. 
and then I'd say, "Oh, I think I got it. Let's practice today." And then they'd have their their huge their huge breakthrough. Uh, but it 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 does take quite a bit of practice on the therapist's part. And I also tell the patient generally, "Is it okay if we both have to struggle a bit to defeat this thought?" I'm sure we'll be able to defeat it, but you might fi- fail at first. I might fail at first. Is that okay if we, you know, fail a few times before we, before we crush it? And and that takes a lot of the pressure yeah. off. Now, what's this thing about big or small, big or huge? Well, uh, you want the patient with this technique is one where you want all an all or nothing r- result. You you don't want the patient to feel kind of like I've somewhat defeated that thought because then they're still depressed and it'll just come flooding back flooding back to them again. You want the patient to, to, to see that these thoughts are just total total r- r- rubbish. Uh, I'll show you what, what I mean here. Sure. Here we have this this thought bugging you. Moving to California just set my life back here. And if you tell yourself that, you're going to feel pretty bad and, and, and you'll think, oh my gosh, I didn't you know find the man of my dreams here. I didn't get the career of my dreams or whatever the issues are. I'm not, I'm not sure what they are. But, but it seems very kind of awful, uh, and I'm sure you're going to find many men of your dreams in Austin, uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Mary, uh, Sarah. But um, uh, let, let me hit you with this, this negative thought. Uh, you know, Sarah, moving to California just set your life back a year. No, I mean, I, I made more progress understanding myself and what I'm looking for than I have in the past 28 years. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. Is, is, was it true what you just said? Oh, yeah. 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 Do, do you see what I mean? So you want, the because this is kind of based on the cognitive therapy idea that the truth shall make you free, which is a biblical notion. And, and the idea is that these thoughts that create our suffering are, are just not nonsensical. They're, they're just rubbish. They're fraudulent. Uh, but sometimes you, you can... You can uh, uh, use the acceptance uh, uh, paradox and, and defeat the yeah. thought by uh, yeah. finding some truth truth in it yeah. too. And uh, and our listeners who've uh, been uh, hearing the podcast for a while will notice that uh, when they go to the live sessions that uh, we've done, you use that quite a bit. Yeah, with Daisy, with Mark, with, yes. with uh, Marilyn. Yeah, and so. This this is the the one podcast where you get to to show from A to Z how you do the technique rather than just using it. Yeah. So uh, you know people may want to refer to this if they want to go back and listen to the to the live sessions. And I want to apologize to our listeners. We're doing this you know as a live session also, and so there's a lot of writing and moving papers, and so we, we're kind of bumping the mic. So. Don't don't write to us saying no. There's some noise uh, in the podcast that we we know that. So yeah, we're, we're doing our best. We're looking for uh, have a little soul here, not perfection. Yeah, exactly. Soul music. All right. So that was a great demo. Thank you, David, and thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns's website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this podcast under the blog page and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has an abundance of resources for therapists as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, a list of online training groups around the world, and much more. Theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. 